Hey everybody, tonight I want to talk to you about looking at object properties in PowerShell. Now, there's something that goes along with this. Um, th this is going back to something I've been saying for a very long time that if, a, if, if an object has an alter method, then it generally wants you to use it. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that, right? Uh, I found out the hard way a couple years ago that, uh, that e even though there's an alter method, if you call the drop method on a database, or on a table, it drops it on the on the server anyway, right? So not always, but generally, if you have problems with something showing up on the server, with your changes showing up on the server, it's because you didn't call the alter method. Now, how do you know if your change has been pushed to the server or not, right? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And there's a really easy way to do that. Let's go ahead and start PowerShell. There we go. Let me expand this a little bit. Make this a little bit wider. There we go. Now, I'm going to take you up to the server property level because it's just kind of easier to work up there. Oops. So we're going to go up a level here. There we go. I'm going to pull a directory, and you see my instance right there. Let's go ahead and set that to a variable. Nope. There. Directory. Now, you can see I've got the same thing now, right? Let's do a GM on that. Okay, so what I'm interested in here is I'm interested in the properties, which should be right here. There we go, the properties. So if I say a.properties, you can see I get a whole listing of these things, right? Let's make that look a little bit prettier. Now, I still get a whole bunch of properties up here. Uh, I, get a, I get a lot of columns now, but look, if I come up to the top of here, I've got name, I've got the value, so you can see backup directory is D, my backups. Um, I get the type, I get whether or not it's writable, whether or not it's readable. Well, of course it's readable. Um, I get whether or not it's expensive. I get whether or not it's dirty, whether or not it's retrieved, and I get something over here that I can't really see. What is it? And I get whether or not it's null, okay? So, I get all this information. Let's go ahead and pare this down just a little bit uh so that um so that it's easier to see so i'll just come here and i'll just say let's look at name writable and dirty not durst dirty yeah ah uh, sorry about that my comma didn't hit there we go okay good so now i've just got the three i'm interested in now this is something interesting the the dirty column, I'm going to show you how that works in a minute, but the writable column, I think, makes it easier to look for uh, for properties that, obviously, that you can change. And where that comes in handy, let's do a, let's pull a GM on A again. And if you'll notice here in the, in the property list, you'll see that you have some that say get, some that say set, and some that say get and set, right? So clearly, the ones that you can set are ones that you can change. But look at how jagged this is, right? It's really hard to tell, and some of these even run off the page. I gotta get set here, I gotta get here, I gotta get there, I gotta get there, I gotta get there, um, I got another get set, I got another get set up here, but they're all over the place, and it's really hard to tell which ones are writable and which ones aren't, right? So by using this method, let's hope I got the right one, yep, there we go. I can see which ones are writable, and I can even I could even filter on only the writable ones, so I could see which values I wanted to change. So this just makes it this writable column just makes it a little bit easier for you to uh, for you to see which ones you can set and which ones you can't. Right now, the dirty that one's actually what we're really interested in right now. Let me go ahead and clear that. And I'll clear the screen to make this easier to see. Okay, now let's go ahead and change the backup directory. So we'll say a dot backup directory equals, and let's change it to c colon backslash my ass. I don't know why I always put that one. Oh, go backup directory, and there we go. Now I've changed it, right? But I haven't changed it on the server, right? Because if you come over here, well, I'm not going to show you. Um, you you know from previous videos, since I didn't call the alter method, that it hasn't been changed on the server. But I can go and see that it's been changed up here. So 
if I come over here, if I come up here now, and see, you can see the backup directory is dirty. It has been changed in the PowerShell buffer or in the pipeline, right? In the, in the buffer, in the session buffer, right? So it has been changed. It was false before. If you don't believe me, go back and watch it. Um, now, if I call the alter method, and then call this up again, this should be changed back to false because now it's been flushed to the server. And there you go. It has been flushed to the server, right? So that's how that works. That's how you can tell if something has been changed in the session buffer but hasn't been pushed to the server is this dirty bit will be set to true. Now that's not just for this level, right? Let me see, where am I? Uh, let's go... Let's go to jobs. Pull a directory, I can get some jobs, right? So let's pull a directory and pull a get member. And you can see I've got properties here as well, somewhere. Where are they? They're there, right there, properties, right? So if I say properties, I get this big jumble of stuff, right? So I should be able to name. Let's make it look look like the other one. There we go. Now look. Oops. Just do it. There we go. Now I get the exact same thing for the jobs, right? So I can tell whether or not they're dirty, and I can tell the. Uh, uh, oh wait a minute. Nope. This is still. This is still the same one. Sorry about that. I pulled up the wrong thing. A dot properties. Yeah, I'd never actually set that. A equals directory. I thought that was awfully easy. There. Now, when I pull up the properties for this one, you notice I don't get anything, right? That's what I expected to happen. I just got kind of kind of got caught up in the moment there. So there's a reason why I didn't get anything for properties here, even though there are properties listed in the get member right there right found it really fast this time and that's because there are multiple objects so I can't really do this on that collection like that watch let me show you something let me clear the screen to make it easier to see okay so um let's see where was I Okay, a dot properties gives me nothing. And again, that's because there are several of them. You notice there was only one instance when we were at the instance level, and that's why I was able to get that object. But here, I have to treat it more like multiple instances. So if you had multiple instances, you'd have to do this, you'd have to do it this way as well. So now I have to pipe this to a for each, right? And inside that for each, I have to do properties and let's pipe that to a format table and say name writable and dirty auto now you notice how I get a list for every single one right of course I expected that that's because I did a for each on all the jobs so if you've got 300 jobs on that server you're gonna get 300 lists but they're all gonna be identical because they all have you know the same properties uh, a category isn't writable on one job and unwritable on another job, right? So if you if you get one, then you have them all. So let's go ahead and limit this, and we'll just say select first one, right? And that should give me, there we go, now I got that. And you can do the exact same thing with instances, only if you want to snipe an instance, then you just have to use a where clause instead of a select, right? So there you go, that's how to use the uh, that's how to use the properties in order to read the writable and the dirty. Now let's, I, I want to show you just one more thing here. Um, before we get away, a name, and what was that? Expensive. There we go. Oops. Oh. I just can't type tonight for anything. Put a space there. There we go. So, the expensive column. The expensive column clearly tells you whether or not a query is expensive. I don't really know what that means in terms of 
of I.O. or CPU power or anything. Uh, the documentation simply says that there are queries that are, that it's information that's more expensive to get. I don't really know what that means since I've had, I haven't really had any trouble getting any, uh, any of this info together. But just know that if you've got a lot of objects and you've got, and you're pulling back one of these properties that's marked as expensive, so say whether or not it has a schedule, right, that you could notice a big difference in the amount of time it takes to pull back this data. And maybe that's what it means. Maybe uh, I haven't done any benchmarking, but maybe there's just a difference. Uh, maybe it really matters when you're doing it against a lot of objects. And it's, and it's fairly negligible if you're only doing it against a handful of objects. I don't know. But anyway, just wanted you to know what that meant, too. Because if, if you're having a long time pulling something back, then exclude that column and maybe it'll come back a lot faster. Anyway, that's all I got. Talk to you later.